I'd like to welcome to the program George Lynch, of course, from Dockin and Lynch Mob. How you doing, George? Mm. Just rolled out of bed. <laughs> it's not normal for me. I'm usually an early riser, but I had a clinic uh, last night in San Diego. I live in Los Angeles, northern Los Angeles, so it was a four and a half hour drive each way. Okay. And uh, four of us went down from ESP and um, left at noon and didn't get back till three in the morning. All right. Well, uh, you know, an hour, an hour of music and um, um, eight hours of driving. So um, I didn't roll out of bed on time, so I'm playing catch up here with, with you. And I apologize, but uh, no problem. Uh, it's, it's a lot <laughs> like being on tour: one hour of performance and eight hours in the car. Yeah, yeah. That's why I tell people when we play places. I was like, you don't pay us to play. That's the easy part. Yeah, <laughs> it's the travel. You pay us to get here. No doubt. Uh, um, uh, well, you never seem to be short of anything going on, obviously. Dirty Shirley, your latest effort, comes out on the 24th of January here. Um, plus, I see that uh, Lynch Mob is going to tour with Doc in this summer. Do we know who's going to be singing with, with Lynch Mob? Uh, Oni. He's back? Yes. Okay. You know, touching that just real quick, he's in and out a lot, but he keeps coming back, so I assume it's never really on bad terms? Eh, you know, not, <laughs> not bad, bad. I mean... You know, it's just, I'm just sort of like, we operate that differently. I'm, I'm more of a, and I'm not saying one way is good or bad or right or wrong. I'm, I'm more of a just, you know, roll up my sleeves and, and get the work done and do it efficiently and cost effectively and, and, uh, you know, and, 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 uh, and, and Oni's more of a kind of like a, like a seventies guy, you know, where he's just a, a free floating and, you know, like a hippie and just kind of, oh, you know, take our time and do, you know, get some inspiration and we'll see what happens and play with life and have party and have fun and all this and that. And I'm like, okay, but, you know, so that creates conflict sometimes, you know, uh, and, and uh, we, we sometimes agree just to put step back, you know, Okay. but it's never anything, they don't all right. wallets or anything too weird it's just kind of like eh, i'm gonna try something different this time around for instance on the, the new lynch mob record that I'm, I'm working on uh oni's not singing on it it's, uh, i've got joe retta okay he hasn't uh that's not a name i'm familiar with he's he hasn't been on any of the other records has he no no i have never worked with him before um other than uh, an independent project uh, that i did with uh someone he's he was the singer on a song that i wrote and played on okay uh, but it has not been released yet, um, but he's wonderful. I mean, he's uh, not in the only world. I mean, he's uh, you know very bluesy, very soulful. You know, he comes from that you know that cut from that Al Green, Paul Rogers mode. You know, uh, Retha. You know, all the great blues oh, okay. soul singers. You know, he's fantastic. He's really, really good. Any uh, uh, any idea when that would be coming out or? Mm -hmm. I'm going to put it at. I'm going to put it at early summer. Okay, so 2020. Just, oh yeah, yeah. That's a kind of a, you know, a, just a, a rough stab. Uh, you know, it could be, could be later, but right now it's looking like um, you know the record's all written um, and uh, recorded as far as the music. You know, and it's just in Joe's hands at this point. We're working on the vocals. Okay. Then we'll go to mix, and you know, it's a couple months process. The uh, the Lynch Mob Dock and Tour is going to be a fun one for the fans. Um, do you do you anticipate performing any songs with Don? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's part of the that's part of the uh, plan is for me to go out at the end of the night and uh, um, do four songs. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, and you know, obviously, Lynch Mob isn't going to be doing any Dock and songs in our set, which we normally do quite a few sure it's going to be just a straight lynch mob set and then don comes out and does his docking thing and then i come out at the end of the night and uh, you know we could kiss and hug and make up and everybody you know it's a look <laughs> <laughs> well, i remember you guys were on um that metal show together and it seemed like you were kind of teasing that uh, a reunion was somewhat imminent at that time. But if I recall, if memory serves me right, that you were a little less committal than Don. Do I have that? Am I remembering that right? I just thought of that when you were talking about that. 
the, 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 what, I'm sorry, say that one more time. Well, didn't you guys kind of tease a reunion that never really came to fruition on the metal show? Oh, uh, if I'm remembering correctly, um, we, yeah, I think, right. Yes, you're right. Um, I'm sorry, because we, we've done that a number of times. <laughs> and I think there's probably a little bit of some elements of the band that feel like it's the second coming of Jesus. And it's really not that. So oh, I got you. We're having an inflated, uh, you know, perception of how important this is to the universe. It's not really that critically important. So um, <laughs> be realistic. So, you know, anyway. So, but we did uh, obviously do something, uh, some, some, uh, a very kind of a, uh, I was going to type a reunion light, I guess. Um, that Japan you know, we, tour? Yeah, we did. We went to Japan and, uh, yeah, we did the South Dakota show. We, we yeah. put out the record with a new song. So, that, that, that South Dakota show was kind of a warm up, correct? Yes. Yes. It, was Ron Keel there? Uh, yes, he was. He, he <laughs> I guess he was working with uh, that the uh, promoter. Yeah, no, he lives there too, uh, still. But uh, oh, okay. Um, you know, just a, uh, on the a couple things on the docking thing. On the uh, this is a, a more of a nerd question, but that under lock and key uh, album cover, you know, it has that kind of like cut out docking logo. Uh, did, did, does anybody own that? Is that like was that a prop made just for the photo shoot, or did someone did Don take it home, put it in his garage? Hmm. <laughs> or do you have it? I wish I had it. That'd be awesome. I put it on my over my front porch. Yeah. Yeah, and no, I don't have any idea. I don't know if that was even a real thing. Okay. Oh, well, so I guess you don't remember the photo shoot, huh? <clears throat> I remember the photo shoot because there was an argument within the band about and the management as far as wearing those dumbass costumes, but <laughs> I, I, I was not wanting to do that and i was kind of kicking and screaming and finally the the manager cliff bernstein called me up and said george you're gonna wear the fucking costume shut the fuck up and just go get down there and do the photo shoot and um <clears throat> he was like that you know yeah. you, when cliff said jump you just said how high so okay but i was of the opinion that you know we shouldn't be dressing up in silly suits and shit, shit like that you know everybody have a different color and you know look like the same outfit that molly crew had and rat head judas priest had you know because the same guy made all the stuff for oh, Brown, really? and they were obscenely expensive and was, i didn't think it would stand the test of time but oh well it actually did though i think he was right you know it was pretty cool all right. you awesome. uh you used to wear a, like i think it was red might have been green but uh a t-shirt that just said balls on it uh where can i get one of those <laughs> i always well, wanted it, it. You want to take that question out of context? Where can I get balls? Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, was that a brand or what was it? <laughs> what was it? Yeah, I have no idea. I mean, you know, just you just like wearing a shirt that said balls. I loved it. I'm don't get me wrong. I, I'm not. I don't know. Sometimes when you do drugs, you do stupid shit. Oh, okay. <laughs> What can I tell you? I don't know. I thought it was cool. I, I, I wanted one. I thought, you know, rocking around my farm town. But uh, uh, Yeah, I, I think just having to, you know, I just have sort of a tongue-in-cheek, sarcastic sense of humor. So, and I like just doing stuff that's just a little slightly thought-provoking and funny. So, you know, you can usually uh, uh, convey a, so a, some, a little entertaining, <laughs> quirky message when you're, whatever you're wearing, you know, why not? You, know? you just Do you still have it? No. <laughs> uh you know on uh you've done you seem to have softened on your stance towards doing stuff with don over the years was there some kind of like uh i don't know formal arrangement or just uh basically just time is healing all wounds or, i suppose i don't know how to phrase that better but you know you guys have definitely had your issues with each other well you know to be very honest i mean our our, our bottom line issues were always um uh really business issues. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've all like, been around the block a bunch of times now. And, and we're so, you know, as far as personally, we're fine. You know, we, 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 we enjoy each other's company. We can hang out. It's we're good on stage. It's, it's fine. I don't, we can write, we can work together, but it, it's just, you know, the business has to be right. That's yeah. All. Okay. And that has to be fair. Well, you would think so, but 
Um, and what's going on? Do, do you have any news on Mick? I know he just kind of – is he actually just retired? I think he took a chunk of time off with the intention of coming back. Okay. You know, but he had to had to heal his his psyche and his body and you know, I mean drumming is hard. <laughs> yeah. You know? Well yeah, and, everybody's getting yeah. older, you know. Yeah, and he's a hard hitter and he's been doing that for how many decades and you know, and it's not like you know, some drummers are that are machines like that, you know, they Kenny Arnoff or somebody, you know, they, they they work out and they do karate and kung fu and they stretch and they have this really disciplined life and this diet and don't drink and you know all this kind of stuff and uh, Nick, it, it, Nick's not one of those kind of people so you know it was really taking a toll on him and uh, he was just hurting everywhere you know and um, and he had a few scary episodes and um, there were wake up calls you know so it was mm-hmm. like okay, gotta, and he did something dramatic and drastic which I think was probably what he needed to do and from what I've heard he's looking great now you know, so we're good. He's healing up and looking fantastic, looking a lot younger and a lot more energy. Um, you know, you know I'm mean, mixing an old friend and I want to see him happy and, and, and be enjoying himself. And, and it seems like he's gotten back to that place now, which is very, very important. So what's the point if you're not enjoying yourself? All right. Yeah, no doubt. Serving somebody else's agenda. Hey, do you remember a, a feature that was done on you? It was either in Guitar World or like Guitar for the pr- Practicing Musicians. Um, it was, uh, it kind of showed some of your tricks, and one of them was that you were using like a can opener on a Les Paul for a whammy bar. Do you remember that at all? I, I remember, really? I, yeah, it was like, and I tried to do it, like uh, the, the picture didn't really explain it very well. I was kind of curious what it, how it would even work. Yeah, you had like one of those old school can openers that was pried in there, and they they kind of described what you were doing. I have no recollection of that, and <laughs> I think that it was had to be a joke. Yeah, I wonder. Well, I mean, I was young and naive. I mean, it really could have just been a tongue and cheek thing that I just didn't get. But uh... I think maybe it was a re- reaction or response to like some some other guitar players, like Gilbert and Van Halen, were doing the thing with. Uh, power tools and stuff like that so i thought okay well i'll do that but in a more primitive <laughs> fashion just to make fun of that you know okay yeah. Yeah, uh, i don't know vice grips like i you know i don't know I but like that, i'm just guessing because i don't remember uh that might just been kind of spur of the moment oh let's just grab this can over over here and say something funny about it yeah it had to be around the release of a record um but i don't know <laughs> I, had, I, I i i i could probably go through my i don't know my my basement and find the magazine, but uh, I, I didn't really throw fucking anything away. Is one of my issues. But um, anyway, back to you, uh, Michael Sweet, who uh, obviously you know you you know very well. He's been on the show a few times. He's a guy who likes to keep busy like you too. Um, I really, really dug, the, and a lot of people did uh, the first Sweet and Lynch tour. Uh, you guys never managed to put out a live show or even like a little short tour or anything. Uh, um, why not? Um. Well, you know, with those projects, it, it comes down to um, logistics and financial viability mm-hmm. as far as being able to get it out there on the road. Um, because, you know, you can't just you can't just pick up and go out and go do shows. You know, we, we've been, for instance, KXM and some of my other projects have been offered things like that. You know, we put out a record, somebody gets excited, you know, a promoter calls or somebody and say, yeah, you know, you know, and pay X amount of money to come out and do, uh, you know, uh, rock on the range, for instance, X kick some good rock on the range and something in Japan or this and that. And, you know, they were good money and everything, but it was like, okay, but think about it. We have to build a crew. We have to make sure all of our schedules are, are clear, which is, which is Lynch mob, Kings X corn and all the other things we're involved in. So we have to find a spot that we're all mutually able to free up, which is almost impossible because uh, we're all doing ten, 10 different things. Yeah. And then we have to come from, you know, three parts of the country to get together, build a crew, put everybody up, get into a rehearsal situation. And then we have to relearn all these songs that we've never really played because we created them in the studio. Okay. Each song is created in one day, every two years doing a record. So we got, we got a, a period of time of six years that we wrote 35 songs and we've got to pull 12 songs out of there 
and go, okay, do we remember how we played these? No, nobody remembers anything. So we've got to pick these things apart, dissect them, and internalize them and get that muscle memory back and learn these things like we've been playing them all our life. That's not easy to do because they're not easy songs. They're, they're kind of complex. You know, a lot of them are complex and, and, and hard to figure out, hard to perform. So, um, so that's a lot of prep work, and that takes a lot of time and money. So you talk about maybe 10 days of rehearsal. Okay, so that's with travel, that's 12 days. That's, that's two weeks right there. Okay. Okay, now you got to go out. Okay, let's say you got this one offer. Okay, that's not going to cover that two weeks of time that you just spent renting a studio and flying people in, putting people up in hotels and rent cars and pay your commissions and your crew and, and your time. You know, you just spent two weeks of which you wasn't you weren't doing something else. That's half a month, and you're not making any money. So then you go, you do your one show. Well, that just paid, babe, babe, if you're lucky, all the expenses for that. So now you have to add other shows. But what's the chances of getting a hold of an agent and saying, okay, we have this one anchor date. We need to build around it. Now you've got to find promoters that are willing to book shows on weekdays with a band that nobody really knows around that one anchor show. And no days off because days off cost you thousands of dollars. So you got to, you know, what's the chances of that happening? That's, this is very difficult to pull off. That's you know, a pretty a detailed answer. Reasons, <laughs> for, for a lot of different reasons, which I won't get into, but it gets much deeper than that. And we've had three or four failed attempts with KXM to try to pull this off. And we okay. got very close. Uh, we got very close for 2019, and that was yanked out from under us at the last minute. And, but we were about ready to go out and do a winter 2019 run. We almost had it figured out, and um, we had the dates. Um, dates were being booked and so forth, and time was cut out, and um, something happened, and able to pull it off but it's very challenging so that's what kxm where there's there is somewhat of a demand for among some people to to see that succeed and get out there and tour it um but with sweet and lynch you know it's a little bit harder sell a little bit even more challenging because they're like well why don't i just go out and do lynch mob <laughs> okay because yeah, you're playing for the same promoters the same crowd it's almost why do this, you know? I, I mean, do you ever you know, like it's uh, different because it's a different thing, you know? But for some of these projects that I do, which is it's almost kind of lynch mobby, but just with a different singer, you know? So it's like, okay, well, it's sort of redundant, you know? Does it ever make you reconsider doing so many different projects? Um, well, I always know it's the wrong thing to do, but I do it anyways because I, I like to. Okay. I like to write. And I, I love being in the studio and I love playing with other people and, and making what I think are interesting, fun records that matter a little bit to some, some people. And um, I just, I would really just stay, I'm a studio creature. I would just stay in the studio forever and never leave. <laughs> I right, love it. Nothing wrong with that if that's where you're, you yeah. know, your, your heart is at, you know. You have yeah. uh, really done a lot of uh, different types of projects too. I mean, well, well, shit! Your um, the Lynch Mob, the the rap metal one, the Smoke and Mirrors. Oh yeah, yeah, Smoke this, yeah. Uh, I, you know, I saw that tour. Uh, you guys did, did you come through the the Twin Cities here. Um, uh, anyway, uh, did you? That was a real big step out of the box, especially for Lynch Mob. Did you ever think about calling it something else? I know you've joked that people have said it's Lynch, Lynch Biscuit, <laughs> but right. Well, I, I, you know. Uh, Again, the, the the dilemma with that was, um, yes, absolutely, uh, was never expecting to call it Lynch Mob, because uh, it wasn't, but it was the only way I could sell the project to okay. a label, and they insisted on it, and they go, well, you can keep your, you can call it something else, and put it out, and sell it out of the back, you know, the trunk of your car, or you can call it Lynch Mob, and have a record deal. No. Put uh, a gun to my, what am I going to do? That three song EP, how do you pronounce it? That Syzygy or Syzygy? Syzygy. Is, what is that a is that a word that uh, what does it mean? Is it made up or uh, the astral alignment of three common celestial bodies along our common axis, exerting a compound gravitational force on a fourth object? It sounds like you've been asked that question before. <laughs> I used to read the dictionary. Oh man, you had that right Look off the top the of your word, head. Man. That's pretty impressive, man. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, a, it's actually a, 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 in some new age circles, it's considered a, a thing that affects you know affects us and can affect us in some ways. It's otherwise known as the harmonica 
harmonic convergence um, when that event occurs. And, uh, and uh, feeding off that, I came up with a project which I never actually finished, but uh, it was actually Jeff Pilsen and I is one of our joke projects. And uh, we called the band the Harmonica Virgins. <laughs> and we're kind of a Lilith Fair lesbian new age band. And, you know, it's a play on words with the harmonic convergence and the harmonic of virgins. So, anyways. That's, that, was, that is a deep yeah. pun. Yes. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> well done. Uh, before we get into Dirty Shirley, I did want to ask you, um, you're, you're not, over the years, you know, following your career, you, you haven't really been known as someone... Uh, to get into a lot of political discussions in your music or just in, in interviews and stuff, but you haven't really held back on the most recent administration by some of the, uh, the quotes I've seen out there. Um, wh wh why the sudden change? Or why get out there now, I guess? Uh, it hasn't been a sudden change for me. I've been a political animal for... Um, I meant outwardly as, as, uh, as, as an artist, you know. I mean, I haven't really seen it in your music much or, or in interviews. Um... Yeah, you got to be careful with interviews. Uh, you know, you can alienate people, mm -hmm. but you can't be afraid to say what's truthful and important. And you know, if you have a if you have an audience that can give a responsibility, even if you don't, everyone has a responsibility to be a participant in the process and to be aware and to you know edify and educate themselves as to what. Uh, what the truth is, so we can base our decisions based on something rational rather than, you know, uh, information. So, uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I have been an environmental active and, and, and politically active person for most of my adult life. Um, and it's been a very challenging thing for me to incorporate uh, my worldview into my music because mm -hmm. I'm not a singer and um, most for the most part not a very good lyricist it's, you know being a lyricist is being a poet ideally and I'm, I'm struggled with that I'm not a natural poet okay. like all or and other people I work with like London you know but I just have you know play play with words like an instrument so um but I have been profoundly uh, uh, committed to, you know, pursuing the truth and uh, doing what I can do in my small way to make the world a more just and fair place. Um, so I'm, I'm very uh, progressive in my politics, very liberal, and um, and have been um, uh, very active in bi environmental circle. Uh, but uh, on a musical level, uh, it's been challenging for me to incorporate those ideas into my music because, as I said, I'm not the one delivering the message. You know. Yeah, I get it. You know, if it, in other words, if I work with a singer that doesn't feel like I do about things, you know, I, it, what am I going to do? Ask them to say something that they don't believe? Sing, sing about something that they don't believe? No, that's valid. Um. Doug is more of a libertarian on lots of issues, Doug Pinnock. So, you know, he'll he'll write songs about, you know, gun rights, which I completely, absolutely oppose. <laughs> but I have to get up there and, you know, I'm part of the process. Okay, we're doing a video for a song called Gunfight, where he's holding an AR-15, talking about, you know, they're coming to take our our guns. I'm like, what? Oh, Jesus. You know, Um and that's not me, you know, so I, I have a problem with that. But, you know, I understand people have different viewpoints, but uh, try not to be calcified in my opinions. And I can be convinced, that, you, know, and I, you know, I know I don't know everything. And uh, so I'm, I'm open to, you know, being, have, being a free thinker. I would like to improve on my stances if, if, uh, if I'm wrong. So, um uh, but there was one record that I did that I was actually very uh, uh, involved, passionately involved in the writing. I wrote almost, uh, I probably wrote 75% of the lyrics on Shadow on the Shadow Train record. Okay. Just not a record that, you know, garnered a lot of attention, but um, it was the soundtrack to the film that I worked on, Shadow Nation. 
And uh, I actually uh, came up with all of the, the uh, again, a majority of the vocal uh, melodies and lyrics. Um, and I don't know where it came from, but I was just, you know, very agitated and motivated and I gave a shit and it was, it came from the right place. You know, I just um, couldn't stop. It was just, you know, and that hasn't happened before or since on any record I've worked on. <laughs> so um, the problem is I just can't sing very well. So I get very frustrated in my head. I'm, I'm Aretha Franklin. And then as soon as I open my mouth, I'm, you know, something else, I'm a frog. So uh, it's very frustrating, but I do hear it in my head. Right. And uh, able to get that idea across and get it to a real singer, sometimes we have good results. But and, and that happened in that case on that record. Um, well, let's get the Dirty Shirley. It comes out on January twenty fourth on Frontier Records. Was the name uh, it just kind of taken from the drink, or is, is there a story behind that? Oh, just sitting around, uh, looking around the studio. We need a name for the band. I'm thinking, why do we why do we beat ourselves up? You know, we, the thing is, I do all these projects over the decades, and like we come up with these dumbass names that are initials, and you know, the, the least creative, lowest common denominator, denominator choice we could you could possibly imagine. You know, nothing cool, nothing anything, no vibe to it. It's like KXM or TNN or you know, Sweet and Lynch. I'm like, oh Jesus God, can't we do better than this? So uh, I, you know, I'm like, you know just name it anything and i was just looking around i, I had this wall of amplifiers and one of them was a freeman dirty shirley i call it that All right. and i'm joking but i submitted that name to uh the singer and the label along with two other names and that's the one they picked not knowing it was an amplifier oh okay i didn't know it was an amplifier i've, I've heard of the drink but that was it oh i didn't know about the drink yeah um, I love the record, by the way. I, I I listened to it a couple times this week, getting ready for this. Uh, it might I don't know. It it, it it's it's a little different. Um, I kind of see it, it. It's it has a lot of lynch mob vibe to it, but it's almost got a little bit of a dream theater. And and I don't know. Hopefully, I don't piss people off. A little bit of Led Zeppelin, maybe. Yeah, it's got all that. I mean, all my records have a little bit of all that. I'm about dream theater. I'd say. I said a little bit of Evanescence in there. Okay. Well, yeah, fair enough. The, the well, songs the are kind of the epic. There, there's a lot of long tracks on here. Yeah, there's that. You know, I, I, I'm really bad at self-restraint. You know, the, what, you know, I, some of these people I work with, they're like, well, you know, could you leave some more holes in the music or do you ever breathe? And you know, <laughs> Like silence is a note and I've got to learn that. I'm still trying to learn that lesson. It's very dense and very you know epic and uh you know sort of you know hey what happened to a three and a half minute song you know yeah no i like hey it's all good with me man i did if it works it works and it definitely uh, did on this Self self-indulgent was the word i was looking for it seems like overly <laughs> self-indulgent <right? laughs> i apologize for that I it did, was... didn't come across that way but uh um the second half is really strong honestly siren song voice of a soul um cold and escalator these are all killer tracks man yeah i guess you know we we being older guys we i you know i we're sort of building these albums like people are dropping a needle you know we can't get we'll never get over that you know i just that's the way i, I imagine people are listening even though they're not so try to build it uh try to lay out a record so that it builds and you got the the video out there for "Here Comes the King." Uh, it you're you're embracing the the gray. I see, George. What are you gonna do? Yeah, yeah. Okay, you got to the point where just it was disingenuous. To, you know, I I, did, I saw a picture. It was on. I saw, I saw some picture on Instagram or something of some band. You know, our age guys, and all people we know. And I looked at this picture, and they were kind of lined up. And I went, every one of these guys is wearing a wig. This guy are all dyed. And I go, it looks so artificial. You can tell their faces that there's nothing wrong with getting older. Why not? You know? And so I think, you know, fuck this. It's, it's starting to look silly. You know? Hey, specifically, who are you talking about in those pictures? <laughs> oh, I, it's all of us, including me. <laughs> yeah, <from> my, <laughs> in my recent past, you know, I was like, wait a minute. That's uh, obvious. Oh, really. man. The the guitar tone. Now every every record you've ever done, it you can definitely has that George Lynch sound. Um, this one though, the, the the guitar tone itself is a. I, I would describe it more dirty than distorted. 
Hmm. Um, I think I was, uh, you know, I think, well, there's a lot of variety on the record as far as guitar tones. So I, you know, there were points that I was, uh, um, going for something that was a little more wall of sound, thicker, heavier, and sometimes more way backed off, you know, just Kelly through a cut little combo, you know, tweet or something, you know, just try to paint different tapestries and, you know, have a sort of comp sonic complex, you know, creating more sonic complexity and make it interesting. Um, and serving the song because there's a wide variety of styles on the record. So yeah, maybe one guitar sound to, for all of the songs, you know, so everything's got changed up in every song. Do you have a favorite track on the album? No, nah, no, nah, I just, uh, <laughs> I, Come on. I, I, I like a lot of, things about a lot of the songs and um i would say i there i have some personal misgivings about certain aspects of proportions of all the songs you know that i didn't feel maybe um you know i quite i didn't quite evolve the composition to you know finishing it where it was i could put a bow on it and say okay this is perfect you know sure Um, Well, well how about from your career is there a record that you're most proud of I would say just generally, without thinking too hard about it, um, Wicked Sensation. Nice. Uh, because everything just sort of came together on that one by design and by luck. And, you know, we seem to be firing all cylinders on that one where the writing just came together very organically. The chemistry was magic. Uh, we had the wind at our backs with the whole, you know, docking, post docking machine energy fan base uh, it was you know we were at the right place at the right time and we had the resources and i think we you know did the best record we could possibly do yeah that's a killer album um and then, then, then and on another note the, in another way um kind of a very underserved attempt at something i did was called stonehouse that was in the i believe the late 90s and uh it was an EP I did with Matt from uh, Saigon Kick, the singer from Saigon Kick, and um, we were kind of holed up. We were holed up in a barn in Northern California, out in the mountains and the hills there, and we we built a studio and and did this very organic kind of trippy thing. It was just kind of Bowie esque, and it's got all these other kind of elements. Really a departure, similar like Smoke This, where well, that was kind of the rap metal thing. This was mm-hmm. something else, you know. Uh, and very valid and i loved i loved that record and it never really i don't think we actually commercially released it but that was something i was very proud of i was just listening to that recently and I'd forgotten about it so hmm. i think they're re-releasing that actually so. cool i'll definitely be looking for that um when was the last time you what was the last record you would have recorded kind of that all in the studio together kind of setting uh kxm okay you got so fairly recently then that's 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 cool yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm KXM, KXM is always we just get in the studio and we we go nuts. We we write. We don't have any preconceived ideas. We just write at the moment. Cool. And every day we have to re- uh, write and record one song, and we got twelve days. Do you like kind of this modern uh, advantage where you can use technology and you can all record separately, or is it just kind of like that's what you do because it's kind of how it has to be, but you prefer everybody together? Well, it's whether you like it or not is really moot because it is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we do it because we can. You know, I mean, if it, or so you know, the the the, uh, the Dirty Shirley record wouldn't exist if it wasn't if we weren't able to use that. Uh, yeah. just, like, sweet no, sweet Lynch too, yeah. right? Uh, correct. Okay. Yeah. Do yeah. you? Well, you know, Sweet Lynch was done more like a band, um, except for me. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, Michael, um, uh, Brian, and uh, the bass player, uh, Lomenzo, they were all in one, they were in our studio back east. Right. Yeah, so they worked together, and it, you know, it, it was, a, it was a, almost a band record, yeah, done in a more traditional sense. Kind of a joke question, have you ever turned down anything, uh, Frontiers, I think it's Serafino has, has offered you? Uh, I don't remember. I, I, yeah, yeah. There, there's been some offers. I mean, it weren't projects. They were just deals that I just felt weren't, weren't. It wasn't worthwhile. Okay. Um, you know, on a business level, to 
pursue because it's too much work for too little returns kind of deal. But, you know, um, not because the, you know, it wasn't interesting to do or not because I didn't want to do it musically. No, not, never for that reason. Uh, well, well, hey, man, like I told you when we, when we first got on, this was a pretty big honor for me. I really appreciate you taking some time to, to talk on all this stuff. Honestly, yeah. I, 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 when I started prepping for this, I, I realized I was going to get out of control if I didn't try to... Well, you said self kind of... What was the term you used? Uh, I had to dial myself back, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, right, right, right. Not, that, not to be too self-indulgent. Self-indulgent, yeah. I mean, I, I was just like, there, there's... I'd love to have you back on sometime because there's not a really, I haven't really tapped into maybe a, 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 a even a portion of what I really want to get into your career, but uh, you're a fascinating yeah. dude. I, I, I love your music. Uh, any, any parting shots? Well, you know, I guess, uh, you know, at, at my age, the, the, the only thing I could say is that, you know, you, at this point is, you know, I just hope that I'm able to say something that matters and not for my benefit or because it's me, but just because why the fuck was I put on this earth if I can't do something that matters? So I'd like to think that I'm doing something that's for the good, you know, and, uh, you know, my, I just, you know, I give a shit. That's why I do what I do. Cool. And, uh, you know, I, I do, I, I do take it personal a lot of times when you miss, when I miss the mark, you know, it hurts because I feel like I, I've let people down. You know, <laughs> so, Every every record I do, like this Dirty Shirley record, is an attempt to, you know, get it right. 